Hello and welcome to the Excel VBA object series. In the previous videos we've seen how to target or how to reference the range object and we've also seen how to select the range, copy, paste, delete, clear a range, etc. In this video we will continue working with the range object and we're gonna see how to format a range. And the range has three main components that we can format. As you can see here for a single cell we have the font, then we have the interior and the borders. And that applies to a single cell or to an entire range. Some of the most common uh, properties for each of these uh, objects, so the, pro the font, interior and borders are properties of the range object that return an object itself. And they accept these other properties. Uh, the most common are, are um, highlighted here. So uh, and for the font are the name, size, color, or color index. We're going to see how to work with color in VBA in, in a moment. The font style and each of the properties to determine the font style. So bold, italic, and underline. So for interior, the common properties are color or color index and the pattern. And for borders is also color and the line style and the weight. We're going to see that in a moment. So now I have some data here. and. Let's add a module and a procedure here, let's say range formatting. So for range A1 to B5, we can target the font uh, object and change the name, for example. It can be, uh, let's, let's set it to Arial, for example, we can also change the the size, and in that case, as you see, the width statement. As a, we're gonna use the width statement because you'll see how useful that is when formatting a range. So we can say with with that range, we're gonna change the font name. We're gonna change the font size. Let's say we make it um, bigger. And then we could change the color. Let's see now how color works in Excel VVA. So there are three, there are several ways to use color. There are actually three or four different ways to um, add color. Um, the easiest way is using the VV color property. And let me show you here. The VV color property accepts just this these eight colors and that's as simple as we could for example set the color of the font to uh, color equals vv blue now if we run this we have applied three uh, different properties here if we run this we're gonna get arial font name so the size is gonna be 16 and the color of the font is blue now, if we want to have more colors, we can use the color index property. And as you can see here, the color index accepts 56 basic colors. So using the color index along with this value, it, it gives us uh, one of these colors. So let's say we want to use this 29. This is a kind of purple color. So let's now go back here. And for example, we're going to use that purple for the for the header, so for the background of the header. In that case, we need to target, so for range A1 to B1, we need to target the interior property or the interior object. And then if we use color index equals 29, that's going to fill the background or the interior with that purple color. But then we will have to change also the color for the of the font. Otherwise, we're not going to see anything. So we could say um, the font is going to be color index, or, or let's just have a color of VVCN. And if we run now the macro, as you see, we have got um, the background or the interior purple and the and the font is now cyan is uh, so we can see that uh, that the text over that color 
And now the third component of, of a range or of a cell is the borders. So we could actually come back up here and add some borders to the same range. So with this same range, we're going to add borders and we can set uh, the color, the, the, the line style. As you see here, we have the line style or we can set the, um, the weight of the line and the color and some other properties. So let's let's have a border of a color and, and we can use again the color property as uh, let's say red. And as you see, as, as you see now, we have uh, red borders around uh, for each of the cells in that range. That's not a border around, that's borders for each cell. There's another property which is border around, which would, would draw a border around that object. So for borders, we have the following um, possibilities here. So uh, the color, we've seen already how to use the color property, but then we have the line style property and there are these uh, six options here. So it could be continuous, a dot, a dash, and so on. And then there are three um, values for the weight, thin, medium, and thick. The other thing we can do with borders is to set specifically the edge. So we, which edge, and that's the same we can do in Excel, right? So we can, whatever we can do um, in Excel under here, under borders, so targeting each of the edges of the of the cell that's what we do with the uh, with the borders uh, argument uh, that we can set in the parentheses so if we say borders xl edge bottom it will be it will set the border at the bottom of the cell only now let's go back to color there is yet a possibility to have more colors, of course, than those 56 colors with color index. And that's using the RGB function. RGB goes along with color. So, for example, if we want to set now um, the color of the, so the background of the body of this table to another color, but it's not a, we cannot find that color in the color index scale, we would use the RGB function. And that's we can do that like this. So let's say we want to have a background in A2 to B5. The interior color is going to be equal to RGB. And RGB accepts three arguments, as you can see here. The first is the level of red. And, and for each of the three, it accepts a number between 0 and 255. And for example, if we have 0, for each of them, that would be actually black. Um, so if we add some level to each color, it will keep adding. And of course, if we have 255 for each of them, that would be white. So let's say we want to have some kind of blue, green, green, bluish green or something like that. We would lower the, um, the red. Uh, we would leave... Um, Let's say the blue there and, and somewhere here. So the thing is, you can get um, thousands of combinations of uh, red, blue, and, and green. So you can get thousands of colors this way. Uh, another thing I want to mention here is that we can use width inside other widths. So for example, here we would use width font, and then we can remove we don't need to repeat here font, font, and font. And we end this with a statement here, which is inside of the other with a statement, right? And then we continue with, with the rest of the with the rest of the formatting. We can also format the dimensions of a range. So in this case, let's say um, we want to make this column bigger and well, the first thing we can do is we can out of it, or let me put this actually in other procedure. So let's say sub range position dimensions, for example. And one of the things we can do here is for our range, which, which was A1 to B5, dot columns out of fit. 
and that we can out of fit the contents in that uh, as you see here now that's one of the things we can do or otherwise we may want to um, let me comment that we may want to set the column width or even the row height um, using those properties so let's say now um, range or columns B we want to have that um, column width equals let's say 20 which is probably quite big and as you see now we have uh, changed the dimensions of the range for column B we could do the same for column A or we could set both columns to 20 uh, and so on now if we do so we probably want to align the contents inside so these are these are not aligned these are aligned to the left actually and the numbers are aligned to the right so we can also use those properties so uh, let's go back to a1 b5 and we can align that horizontally which is um, and then we have to set it to center or left or right and we can also align that vertically in this case it doesn't make uh, it that is not necessary but if we had uh, bigger cells we may want to align that vertically with vertical alignment so if we run this now you see it has been aligned to the center and let's make this a little smaller so, so now we have our table aligned to the center um, another thing we we can do we can also change the number format of a range and in this case uh, we could format this as a number or as a currency so that would be columns b number format and number format follows uh, excel's formatting what we can find uh, here uh, it could be general a number right a currency let's have it as a currency and we can also add a custom formatting uh, following the same um, the same expression that we use here in uh, in Excel so for currency that would be dollar if that's your default comma zero dot zero so that will have that will add one decimal so that will add the currency format with one decimal and in this case it's showing the pound because I have that as per default and otherwise you can also change that so as you see here we can set the number format as any of the Excel uh, formats like with the number format property so it could be general it could be a percentage it could be a time or date and here we have also some other examples as you can see um, down here we have um, so if we want to change to have two decimals um, so here is the dollar uh, symbol if you have that currency set up um, uh, the date format uh, this is for text and so on and then you can use all the custom formats available in Excel we can also let me add a new model here range uh, other let's say other properties and methods of the range that allow us to change to format a range is for example we can uh, merge um, a range so let's say we have here a table and we want to merge these two cells we would do range a1 through b1 dot merge as simple as that And, and then and then of course we could use the properties as we've seen earlier applying to range a1 only now after merge after being merged um, to set the formatting of the of the titles so range a1 only font size equals 20 for example and interior color and let's make it gray something like that and of course we can do it like this way 
and also um, horizontal alignment center. Now we can also um, hide certain rows or columns. Let's say we want to hide the entire column B. Let me comment this. So that would hide column B. And of course, if we say e hidden equals false, then we show again the column. We can also lock uh, the cells, let's say we want to lock the amount, so that would be a range B3 through B6 now. And we want to, to lock those cells when we protect the worksheet, so that would be locked equals true. And another thing we can do is to group certain cells. So, so let's say this is uh, 2021, and then we're going to have 2022. Jan, Feb, and so on. And we want to group, um, let's make it like this, 22. And we want to group um, by year. So for range B4 to B7 dot rows, we want to group by row. That's uh, We can also group by columns, but uh, then group. And as you see, we have group everything for 2021 and we could group for other year or as we want and we can just uh, use ungroup to remove the grouping and note that when we group cells and we collapse those cells those cells actually behave as hidden cells so if we ungroup um, the cells now, those cells actually remain hidden. We would need to come here and, and hide, or we would need, if we want to do it with in the macro, we would have to use then, after ungrouping, we would have to use um, the property hidden set to false after, after running that. So I'm commenting that because we've already run that, so now, if we set hidden to false, then we see again all the all the cells. So that's how group and ungroup works. So that's how we format a range of cells. We've seen how to format the color of the font or interior or the borders, or how to format the number format of the of the values in a in a cell or in a range. And we've seen also how to change the dimensions, how to change the column width. Um, or the row height, or how to outfit the contents in a range. And we've also seen how to align the content horizontally or vertically. Um, and then we've seen also how to merge a range and how to um, hide or unhide uh, cells in a range. And also how to lock the cells, which would take action when we protect the worksheet. And finally, we've seen also how to group and ungroup cells in a range. In the next video, we'll see how to somehow to manipulate the contents in a range. We will see how to search and to find values in a range or how to replace values in the range. And we will also see how to sort and how to filter values in a range. So see you in the next video and thanks for watching.